Uh, Becky's going to read some scripture now from Luke about uh, the coming of the Messiah. Yes. Taken from Luke 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Our speaker today is the innkeeper himself. No room for them in the end. Those words haunt me to this day. What kind of person would turn away a young couple expecting a baby? What kind of heartless innkeeper? That's what people have asked. But I want to tell you my side of the story today. See, I'm I'm just an ordinary person like, like you folks. I'm, I'm just an ordinary man. I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a husband, and I run a small business, very small business, uh, barely puts bread on the table. Most of the time, my small inn was, uh, was empty, and occasionally when there was a feast, like Passover, it would be full, but the best opportunity ever came along for me was thanks to Caesar Augustus of all people. Now, I, I'm no fan of Caesar. I, I don't like any of the Romans. I wish they would all leave, but he did me a great favor when he called for the census to be taken. Now, he just wanted to make sure he got a count of all the people so he could get as much taxes as he could possibly get. If you can imagine a leader interested in getting a lot of taxes from his people, imagine such a thing. So he called for everybody to go back to the town in which they were born, which meant that thousands of people in Israel had to travel. And here I was in this little town in Bethlehem, a thousand people on a good day. And all these people had to travel back. And my inn filled up in one day. And then for the next three, four days, I turned away dozens of people who came looking for a place to stay. I had turned away a lot of people already before that young couple showed up. And when they came, I... I said the same thing to them. I said to everybody else, I, not only do I have no room for you, but I don't think there's a single room available in all of Bethlehem. And I'm very sorry because they were in bad shape, these two. They were young. Uh, the woman was obviously expecting a child, and they'd traveled for three days. They'd been on the road. They said they came from Nazareth. It's 80 miles away, and they were really in trouble. And I felt so bad that I didn't have room for them. And, while I was talking to them and they said they were expecting a baby, my wife heard the word baby and she took over. She came out and she said, we will find a place for you. We will make a place for you. And by we, she meant me. And she sent me back to the stable to the, behind our place, a little tiny place to, where the travelers would keep their animals. And she told me to clean it up as best I could and to push some fresh car out and make it as, as clean as possible. And I was happy to do that because I felt so bad for that couple. And I, I went back, I cleaned it up a little bit, and they were so grateful just to have a place to stay. It wasn't much, but it, they were just grateful to have a place to, so they wouldn't have to be on the street. I went back to bed that night, and in the middle of the night, I heard this noise. I thought it was coming from an animal that was in trouble, but it turns out it was a baby crying. 
And it woke up my wife, too, and I got one of these elbows in the side. It was one of those, I told you so, elbows. Aren't you glad we put them up here? And I was truly glad we put them up. And after that, I heard men's voices. It wasn't too long after that. I heard men right outside of my place, and I was a little concerned about that. So I told my wife she should go check that out to make sure it wasn't a, she kicks me out of the bed. I go and I had to look, check it out. And when I get out there, well, I could smell them before I could see them, to be honest with you. These are shepherds, and uh, they, they're the worst smelling beings on earth. I don't know how the sheep put up with them, but uh, it was a whole group of shepherds there, and they were all out of breath. They had all been running, and I grabbed the first one there, and I said, what are you doing at my place? Don't you see that this young couple has just had a baby? Why are you bothering them? Why don't you get out of here? They said to me, it's because of the baby that they came. They told me the most amazing story. They, they said they had just been out watching their sheep not far away. And they had all of a sudden this angel appeared and a whole bunch of angels appeared and they started, the angels start telling them that a baby has been born. The baby is the savior of the world and they could, would find the baby in a manger in Bethlehem. Well, we were in Bethlehem and that manger was my manger. It was in the back of my house in the stable back there. And they are telling me that the savior of the world is sitting in my manger right now. It just seemed ridiculous. It seemed too incredible. So I went to the young lady and I said, do you want me to get rid of these guys? Are they bothering you? And she said to me, no. She said, no. She said, an angel came to me also. It was nine months ago. An angel came to me and told me I was going to have a baby. And the baby was going to be the son of the Most High. He was going to be the savior of the world. And I was to call the baby Jesus. I remembered that name. She was fine with the shepherds being there. I wanted to get away from the smell. So I went back into the house. My wife was mad at me for letting the shepherds get close to this baby because they're dirty and all these things. But I didn't sleep a wink that night because I was listening, thinking about what they said angels appearing to the shepherds and to the woman and about this baby being the savior because I grew up as a as a good Jewish boy my father would uh, would take me for a walk on, on one every week he'd take me for a walk and sometimes my grandfather and they would tell me about the prophets and how the prophets had had told our people uh, for generations that they were going to send a savior a messiah we called him uh, the anointed one that he was going to come as the savior of the world. And our people have been waiting for 3,000 years for the savior to come. And now to think that, is it possible? Is that even possible that the savior that they've been waiting for for 3,000 years is at my house? Is it at, not only in my house, but in that manger, in that dirty stable behind my house? That's the savior of the world. It was just too amazing to me to grasp it all. I just stayed up all night thinking about it. Once the census was taken, everybody kind of returned home and that young couple found a house where they could stay till the baby was big enough to travel. I never forgot about it, of course. You know, I kept waiting to hear more about this Jesus. And 30 years went by and I never heard a thing, but I never forgot. And it was about 30 years later that I started to hear stories about this rabbi who's traveling around in Israel, who was doing amazing things. They said he taught like no man had ever taught before. They said that he healed a man who was blind from birth. He healed people who were deaf and who were lame. And, and then I heard that he raised a man from the dead. And they said his name was Jesus. You see, it had to be. His name was Jesus. He healed a man who was blind. He, he raised a man from the dead. It's, he had to be the Messiah. It had to be the one who was at my house. It's, it still amazes me. How could it be? I just, it still haunts me that there was no room in the inn, you see. Because I didn't know. I didn't know who he was. If I had known who he was, I would, have, I would have kicked everybody else out of the inn, uh, make some enemies. I would have kicked everybody else out of the inn and I would have given him the whole place. I would have said, you can stay in my bed, you can stay in my room, I'll go sleep in the stables. 
if I had known who he was, as soon as they knocked on the door, I would have invited them in. That's what I would have done. I would have invited them in. Those words still haunt me. No room in the inn. How can that be? No room for Jesus. How can that possibly be? But, uh, well, that's my story. Thanks for listening to it. song please silent night holy night all is calm Lord at thy birth.